Okay, I get it. You just came back from your grocery shop with the frozen pizza with some things on top that they dare to call ingredients. Please, get that things inside of the garbage can and watch this because today, together, we are gonna make pizza that the most likely will look like the Neapolitan one. And the cool part of all of this is that we will not require you to buy anything that you don't already have at home. In this case, a pen and an oven. So, for today's video we are gonna use flour from Caputo. In this case we will be using a type 1 and a 00 flour. If someone can find this type of flour on their grocery shop, I will leave a link in the description so you guys can buy it pretty easily. For the yeast we are gonna use the fresh one instead of the drier one and of course we are gonna be using salt and water. Ok, let's start by waiting everything. For 5 pizza we will be using 800 grams of 00 flour from Caputo and 200 grams of type 1 flour still from Caputo. These two flour combined they will give us a more robust flavor and a more nutritious pizza compared to perhaps using only the 00 flour. Second, we will go with the water. Make sure to take some cold water, something that goes from 10 degrees to 50 max. This will help us get a more easy dough to work with. And for the water, we wanna get 670 grams of fresh cold water. If you don't have it right away, just take a container, weigh the water and put it into the fridge for about 50 to 30 minutes. After that, you can weigh your yeast. There is gonna be 4 grams of fresh yeast. And at last, you can weigh even the salt, 25 grams of sea salt. Now you are good and you can jump to the next step. Okay, now it's time. Take a bowl and put the flour and the salt inside. Give it a first mix to make sure that everything gets mixed together. Now take the water that you previously put inside of the fridge and start to dissolve the yeast in it. Make sure to give it a good mix. We don't want the yeast to remain in peace and do not melt and this can easily happen since the water is cold. The cold does not help with the dissolution of the yeast but with a good stir everything will be okay. Take the water with the yeast inside and start to pouring it inside of the flour that you previously mixed with the salt and start to combine everything together. We don't want to mix it until it's fully mixed, but just enough to remove all of the flour that is stick to the border of the bowl. After that we got a result that is similar to the one that you are seeing in the video, we can jump into the next step, that is gonna be to take another bowl, or clean the one that you were using it, and put some olive oil on the border of the bowl. Place the dough back inside and cover it with some plastic foil. Now we have to wait for a period of time that goes around from 8 to 24 hours. Ok, sorry for the interruption, we are gonna go back in the video as soon as possible. I'm just here to announce that finally, after months of people commenting on how to make the Napolitan dough with the quantity of yeast, salt and everything, I just finally opened the site on where you can buy and find the recipe for all the type of dough that they exist, starting from the biga, the direct dough, the polish dough, the focaccia and some other things. So if you are interested on upscaling your pizza game level, you can find this link in the description, check it out and let me know what you think about. Now let's get back to the video. The major difference between waiting 8 or 24 hours is gonna be flavor and in the stretching strength of the dough. A good result can be easily achieved just after 8 hours. The one that you are seeing in the video has got into the fridge for around 20 hours. Ok, as you can see, even if we didn't mix it completely, the time has did the rest of the work for us. We are just missing one part, which is gonna be the one that we are gonna use to give our dough more strength. And to do that, we are gonna take the dough out of the bowl and place it onto the counter and stretch it. Don't be scared to stretch it too much and break it because it's ok. Make sure to stretch every part of it like a blanket, leave it for one minute and then join it again. With this movement you gotta form a ball. We will be kneading the olive oil one more time and you just gotta spread it on top of the dough to prevent the dough from forming a crust. And to be even more sure that this is not gonna happen, take the bowl that you previously have 
you're doing it and put it upside down on top of the dough. After 20 minutes you are ready to divide the dough into 5 small pieces that are gonna weigh around 270 to 285 grams. The easiest way to close a ball of dough is to turn it upside down and simply repeatedly take the edges into the center of the dough. Do this until you realize that a ball has formed. And at this point, try to recreate this movement to give it a further closer. The movement that you will have to recreate will have to remind you as if you were bringing a spatula under the dough. So you don't have to hold it, but simply slide it onto the counter. This will ensure that it will close even better. Then, take some small container, they don't have to be this one, but if anyone is intended to buy it, I will leave a link into the description. Leave the container with the dough inside at room temperature for around 2-3 to three hours. This is the moment that we were waiting for. Now it's time to cook our pizza. In this case, we will be making a simple margarita using only fresh ingredients, mozzarella, tomato and basil. To roll out the pizza, we will be using semolina flour. I prefer semolina flour instead of the 00 because it has much larger grains, making the rolling step much easier. Take our pizza dough bowl by flipping the container upside down. Be gentle while rolling the pizza, don't press too hard on the center, otherwise we will have the problem that when we take it into the pan, it can break. After rolling it out, we need to transfer it into the pan, but before we can do that, take some olive oil and spread it all on the bottom of the pan. Now you can place your pizza and you can start to topping it. As a base, we will use some tomato sauce and of course we will be adding some mozzarella and some leaves of fresh basil. Now onto the cooking. Remember to preheat the oven or it will be problematic when we have to put the pizza inside of it. Remember to set the oven to the maximum temperature that it could be. So if you can go up to 250, put it to 250 and so on. So the first skillet cooking shouldn't last more than 4 minutes. The goal is to puff up the crust and to cook the base as similar to a restaurant pizza as possible. The result should be as you can see in the video, so not too dark and not too light. Remember that you have to put the flame on a low to medium bit. Once you achieve this result, it's time to transfer your pizza into the oven. Again, it shouldn't take more than 5 minutes. The result that we are aiming for is to heavily cook the mozzarella and to finish to cook the dough inside of the crust. This is the result that we want, no sign of burning and the dough perfectly cooked inside. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you can make a Napolitan pizza style at home. If you have enjoyed the video and you wanna see me make another video perhaps using maybe some other tool, let me know with a comment. And from Emilio, that's all. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.